Hello Horror Hounds, as voted for by Z Rysek and Masquerade as Sane. 30 Days of Night. These vampires don't sparkle. It had been some time since I last watched 30 Days of Night before reacquainting myself with it for this video and I remembered it being a sort of a, a solid B-movie. I remember liking the vampires in it a lot, not particularly uh, liking the ending. I've not read the comic that it's adapted from. So if any of, uh, any of you are fans of the, uh, the comic or any of the subsequent comics, I think there are quite a few 30 Days of Night titles now. Let me know about the comics. Is it something I should read? Is it sort of like, well, if you've seen the film, you don't really need to, to read the comics. Are the comics uh, superior? Uh, we'll start off with, with some positives. And I, and I think, yeah, we're going to end with some positives as well. In business, this is going to be what we call a shit sandwich. Um, some good stuff, some not so good stuff, and we're going to end on some good stuff as well. But the pitch of the movie is one of those strokes of absolute genius that when you hear it, it sounds so obvious and so simple that you go, well, well why didn't someone, why hasn't someone come up with that? I could have come up, you, you feel like it's so simple you could have come up with it yourself. Um, but of course you couldn't. Um, but to set a, a vampire movie uh, in uh, a small township uh, that's uh, so far north in, in Alaska that they have a period without sunlight of, well, the titular 30 days of night, and then vampires turn up and they have to survive for a full month uh, before uh, the sunlight will come and drive the vampires away. That is a hook and a half. That is a work of, of absolute genius. When the attack does finally happen, it starts up slow and builds up ahead of steam. That's probably the, the best the film gets when shit really starts hitting the fan in Barrow and you have, you have little vignette attacks, little households under attack. The film teases the vampires. They're fast, they're deadly, um, but slow, slowly uh, they come out into the open because they're really here to play. This is, this is Disneyland for them. This is not the hunting, stalking predator that has to remain in the shadows and uh, clean up its kill afterwards because it doesn't want to leave any trace of its existence uh, for fear of being hunted. This is them cutting loose. It's like a, it's like a stag party. It's like a month-long stag party for vampires. For them, I guess, uh, as long-lived as they are, it's a long weekend of complete and utter debauchery. And they do. They go absolutely nuts. When we finally see them, the look of them is superb. These are vampires as killers. There's no emoting with them. Um, they're not that they're not um, uh, Anne Rice's uh, romantic vampires and I take no issue uh, with those type of vampires at all uh, there's room for all kinds of vampires but these are apex predator brutal killers the overhead shot of uh, of the town with people running around with shotguns and then uh, vampires jumping off roofs and taking them down and and, and vehicles and shit like that and everything going to chaos and uh, you've got the black buildings and the white snow with the occasional just splash uh, of, of of arterial red uh, where, where a murder's happened. That is fucking glorious. Then I think the gear changes in the movie get a little clunky. We've got We've taken such time setting setting up the town, some of the characters, the situation, uh, introducing the stranger, played by Ben Foster, who's a great, great character, played greatly by him. And then we have the, the, the first night's attack. Uh, the, the rest of the 29 nights get so compressed uh, that I think one of the letdowns in the film is I don't feel that there's really a sense of protracted, dragged out survival. And I 
think now in the days where television is uh, king more in the long form storytelling I think if this were getting adapted now this might be adapted into a, a, a TV miniseries or two two mini seasons maybe an episode a night so two half seasons of 15 episodes or something like that to really get the sense of the the 30 days, the 30 nights, uh, a, a brilliant idea, a brilliant setup, uh, and uh, executed superbly as the vampire plan unfolded. Uh, but the, the back end of the story never really worked that well for me. And on rewatch, I'm, I'm still not, I'm still not convinced by it. Aside from uh, a symptom that's all too familiar now uh, in Hollywood movies of uh, too much shaky cam, uh, the, the action is uh, brutal, bloody. Uh, yes, there's some computer augmentation there, but there are some, there are some superb practical effects in the movie. There's a head that comes off by uh, about three axe strokes towards the end of the movie that looks practically fucking photorealistic because they're using a practical head that looks so close to, to the actor's head. It looks like he's, to my eyes, it looks like he's getting his head chopped off with an axe. That was really surprising. This uh, uh, use of practical effects really sells some of the violence in this movie. It can't be praised highly enough. I like Josh Hartnett as an actor but he's an actor I've grown to like, and he still doesn't completely convince in this. Um, he's superb in Penny Dreadful. I think he's an actor that at the moment is actually coming into his own. I've probably never seen him better than in Penny Dreadful. So uh, he doesn't quite convince in this. Melissa George, again, who plays his, his estranged wife in this, they never quite convince uh, as a couple for me, but uh, boy oh boy, let's leave the best to last. Danny Houston as, as Marlowe, the head vampire. He just, he owns it. He absolutely owns it. Danny Houston gives us, I don't think we've ever really seen a vampire like that before. I've seen him recently uh, in um, American Horror Story Coven, where he plays a, a <laughs> a jazz saxophonist slash axe murderer. And he's great in that too. And he doesn't do very much, does he? He's gonna be in the upcoming Wonder Woman movie. And I can't, actually can't wait to see him in that because uh, recently watching American Horror Story uh, uh, with him in it and, and re-watching this. Do you know what? I really like Danny Houston. And uh, he, he does the business in this. He gives you, uh, there's enough of a sense of who Marlowe is and there's a sense of his, his age and a slight uh, weariness and, a, and an otherness. I mean, he is a predator. He is an animal. He will kill you. But with just enough of a sense of, uh, of that long, uh, a life long lived, uh, he's, he makes a superb vampire. So we're going to end on a, on a high uh, with a salute to Danny Houston and one of the greatest unsung uh, movie vampires because 30 Days of Night doesn't get talked about much. I understand why. When I said it was a solid B movie, um, it really doesn't bother the top flight of, of vampire movies. It is sort of an also ran. It's solid, it's good. It kind of does what it's what it wants to do, uh, without delusions of grandeur. But in amongst that, you've got a fantastic vampire. In a similar way to the movie Constantine, uh, is just a, it's, it's a workmanlike sort of fantasy come horror movie that sort of does 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 its job well enough. And just folded up in there is uh, Peter Stormare's uh, devil. And one of the greatest screen devils uh, that there ever is or, or was wrapped up in this workman-like movie. So in, in a similar vein, Danny Houston's Marlowe is 
one of the best vampires you'll ever see, wrapped up in a sort of ho-hum, solid, good enough vampire movie. 